hello everyone. Welcome to October's session of virtual mini art. Here is the painting we'll be working on today. I thought this would be a fun one um, for fall since we're starting to get some more of that fall weather, starting to see the leaves change. So I hope you enjoy painting this and please post any questions that pop up as you work below this video or feel free to send me an email. Have fun! All right, let's get started with our supplies. So you'll be picking up a six by six inch canvas. Yours will be white. I'm just using um, one that I had, so that's why it's pink. Um, I painted this in cameo pink. It's not going to make a huge difference. Um, I'm still going to paint this exactly the way I did for this one. But if you wanted to, you could pre-treat your canvas. Um, this one did not have a pre-treated canvas, it was just white. So mine will look a little bit different. I'm gonna get started with this. You're gonna wanna have a pencil and a ruler, some water, some paper towels, and a couple of different brushes ready to go. So we're gonna use this, this larger one here, mostly in the sky. We've got this one here that's a little bit smaller. That one we'll use mostly on the flat earth portion a little bit in the trees, and then you'll want a bit of a detail brush, so something small. We might grab a couple other brushes as we go, so I recommend having um, your brushes handy in case you wanna use something different. Okay, your paints. We have got white, black, granite gray, Tuscan red, real red, nutmeg brown, Let's see, let's jump over here. I've got a uh, light lavender, pink blush, sunny day, Kelly green, Christmas green, Laguna. Let me see, we have lime sherbet, and then this one's lime tree. All right, so we're gonna use just a little bit of some of these colors, so feel free to wait until you need it um, and just dip straight from the bottle. Sometimes that works well if, for, for, if we're only using a small bit like what we'll do with the black, for example. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you'll wanna do is about an inch and a quarter up from the bottom, gonna draw your line. That'll be where the earth is. We'll draw our barn here. I'm going to just make sort of a swoopy line to give myself an idea of where I want my trees to go. Okay, so up here, that's where we'll focus in on the sky. Now I'm just gonna get a light outline of my barn. You can use the ruler for this if you want. Okay, so I'm on the right hand side, just leaving a small bit on the right to fill in with the tree. So you've got kind of this classic barn shape. Nothing too fancy. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it just like that, just real simple. Um, I'll fill that in as we go, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. All right, and now we're gonna jump right into the painting portion. We're gonna start with the sky, because what we're going to do throughout this painting is we're going to jump to various sections to give the different areas time to dry between coats. All right, so the colors for our sky are going to be purple, pink, yellow, and white. So I'd like to start with a little bit of the pink and the purple, and this is sort of, you can mix a little bit if you want. You don't wanna over mix. You sort of wanna be able to see the various colors. I'm gonna go with pink, purple, and white for now. And I'm gonna put yellow in after because I don't want yellow to mix and create a weird color. So right now, 
I am doing a mix of dabs and a couple of strokes in there. Luckily, clouds in the sky take on um, a lot of different, different looks. So as you can see, I'm not really doing a whole lot of blending. I'm sort of taking a little bit of each color, just getting it on there. This first coat here is to cover your canvas. So you don't want to overthink it too much because the sky is going to have, have those mixing colors that you can still really see through. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So I am going to leave it at that. All right. Let that dry a little bit. Then we will add in a little bit more white and we'll add in a little bit more yellow or a little bit of yellow rather. Okay. Let's give that brush a rinse and a dry. And we're gonna jump down into this area here. Now for this one, you're gonna take your smaller brush and what you're gonna do is you're gonna focus in on your greens. So we've got, we've got our Kelly green, we've got Christmas green, and we've got the Limeade Lime Sherbet. I'm not gonna go for my Laguna right now. This one is similar to the sky in that you can let your colors kind of blend. But what I'm going to do is do horizontal strokes. And I'm just letting colors mix a little bit. Once again, not really over blending. And feel free to, this is usually where I, I start to turn my brush on an angle to kind of get that, that thinner side of it. So if you feel like you want to do that, definitely go for it. So as you can see, I'm just, I'm not rinsing or anything, just taking a little of this, little of that. I'm using Kelly Green and Christmas Green. So those are my darker ones. We're doing something similar to what we did in the sky. We wanna get a couple of colors in there so that we've got something to work with. Mostly at this step, we're going for coverage so that we can build. There we go. Okay. Okay. You want to make sure you get your edges. Okay. And don't worry too much about this being perfect. This this horizon or excuse me, this horizon line uh, doesn't have to be perfect yet. Okay. All right. I'm gonna give that brush a rinse and a dry. Okay, next, going for my detail brush, I'm gonna just roll that in my nutmeg brown. Might grab a little bit of black too. You can see what color you'd like, but this one here is going to go right here. So this is gonna go right on that line where the ground meets the sky. and I'm not going in front of the, the barn here, just a little bit right there. So I just mixed a smidge of nutmeg brown with a little bit of black and made that. All right. Okay. I'm gonna switch back to this brush here. If you want, you can keep going with your detail brush. It's up to you, depending on what feels good to you. I'm going to next, fill in a little bit of this background here. So some of these reddish colors are in the background. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that. And I'm going to dab. 
I am now going to take, just take a tiny, tiny bit of your real red with your Tuscan red. And again, you don't want to over blend. Feel free to take a little yellow if you want. Kind of let that mix a little bit. Okay, and you only really need to go about down to there because we will fill it in with some greenery. So I'm gonna do it like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. Same little dabs. And with the same colors, you can go over onto your sky area a little bit. That's fine. If you want a little teeny bit of yellow, just to give it a little bit of variation. And there we are. We've got a reddish colored tree up front here, but I'm going to wait to add that in. Okay. I'm using the same brush, but again, use the one that's most comfortable. I'm gonna take a little bit of Laguna so that's kind of that bluish green. I'm just gonna put a little bit back here and I'm sort of letting it blend just a touch with the sky and with this color next to it. I don't wanna do it too much. I don't wanna touch it too many times, but that same dabbing. So I just did it like all the way across, which you can do if you like the way that looks. I am not even rinsing and I'm going straight for a little bit of limeade. Just putting a little bit in a couple of spots. I will refine this, so don't worry if it looks sort of weird right now. Just getting a little bit in there. Okay. Alrighty. Now, I am going to go ahead and paint a couple of the trunks of my trees. So I'm going to take a little bit of this brown here, maybe a little bit of that black, right over here. I'm going to start with the ground. There we go. Real simple trunk. I can sort of see there's a little bit of a trunk back here, so I'm going to put that right there. There's another little bit here. So you want to really lightly touch your canvas. And a little bit here. Okay, and the rest is brush that's kind of blended in there going to use a little bit of my Christmas green. That is this one here. Start down here and I'm making kind of like a pine tree look. So I'm starting at the bottom, putting a little bit on either side but I'm focusing on the left side of this tree primarily. You wanna make sure you taper off a little bit too as you go upwards. There we go. Okay, so you have something like that. As you can see, I left it a little bit bare on that side because I'm going to put a lighter color in there. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with this tree here. So we can see that we don't see a whole lot of it. And I'm doing kind of the same thing. And I'm sort of imagining where some of this might be. There we go. So filling it in just like that, we're gonna do the same thing as we'll do with this one. We're gonna circle back 
And we're going to put a little bit of a light color in there. I'm going to do one more of these on this one here. Okay. So you kind of want to give it a little bit of an upturned look. There we go. Okay. There we go. While I've got this nice green on here, I'm going to use some of this to just dab. I'm going to take a little of my Kelly Green, just kind of dab a little bit. We're just thinking other trees. There we go. So you're filling it in in sort of a leafy way. Go. You don't want to fill it in too completely though. We want to add some more nice colors in there. And put a little bit on the bottom here. Just thinking some kind of brush. And you'll notice if you do use um, the smaller brush for this and the larger brush for those other those other portions, you get a little bit of variation in in your dab which is kind of nice. Okay, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> doing a lot of switching of brushes. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to this brush here, that slightly larger one. I'm using the side. I'm getting a little bit of Tuscan red, a little bit of regular red because I want to fill this tree in. I find with painting trees, it you have to really be careful not to overthink it. Otherwise it takes on a sort of a funny look. So just dab, sort of do it quickly, and then just leave it be. So I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna let that be exactly as that is. Well, you have that color on there, feel free to darken any of these red areas up that you want to, or add a little bit more. You don't want to muddy it up too much, but you definitely can add a little bit from time to time. I'm going to take a little bit of my two lime colors. I'm just going to do a little dabbing right in here. And you can see it sort of mixes just a little bit. And so let's do it here as well. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of my Laguna. So just sort of go for it. It's sort of hard to explain this one I found because you just sort of see what you think it needs. Then you, then you put it there. So we've got a nice look here. Looks like a bunch of different vegetation. I'm going to make a little orange for myself. Just took a tiny bit of yellow, a little bit of red. And it sort of comes out a little peach, which is quite pretty. Put a little bit of that in there. I added a couple bits to this tree here. Just a tiny bit, just give it a little touch. There we go. Okay, ooh, I hope you like how yours is coming out. I'm gonna go back through, put a little Laguna, a little more Laguna. And at this point, it's sort of, you could use whichever brush works for you. I can feel this one might be a little large for what I'm doing right now. So you may want to do it with your smaller brush. Okay, and there we go. All right, jumping back to my little brush here. I'm going to use some of the my lime colors one more time and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this the, this other side of my tree so as you can 
see. I'm going to fill mostly one side with it. But I'll also bring a little bit over to that other side there. Okay, and if you want, feel free to extend those branches a little bit on your other side with, with a little bit of that Christmas green. Okay, there you go. So you get kind of that look as if the sun's coming from over on the right hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing with this tree up here. So nothing is super duper distinct in here. You'll probably notice it's it's a little bit um it, it's it's a little bit abstract. It's it's a little bit um, impressionistic. I am now dabbing in a little bit of my lighter greens here. Just filling in a couple little gaps towards the bottom. I feel like I want to darken it up a little bit. There we are. Okay, so you just want to make sure at this stage in the game that everything is sufficiently covered in this uh, foliage area. There we go. All right, now last thing I'd like to do is just refine this tree a little bit. Just a little bit around the edges. I just want to extend some of those branches. Okay, if you want, you can redefine the trunk a little bit. I think I will. So, just a little bit right there. Okay, so it's super duper subtle. Okay. All right, I'm gonna jump back into the sky. I'm going to use my largest brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and we're gonna do a little bit of clouds. The way you wanna do that is get a good amount on your brush and dab. Dab and sort of spread around a little bit. Then you're gonna take a little bit of yellow and you're gonna go right on top. Once you have a decent amount on here, you can spread it a little bit. Sort of a slight circular motion will work. You can put as many clouds as you want. Just mixed a little bit of pink into my white. There. So I definitely want a variety of clouds in here. I don't want them all really, really thick. Just like a little bit of a wispy look too. So I, I'm not adding a whole lot more to the brush, sort of using what I've got on it and just kind of rubbing it in a little bit. And 
and I just put a little more yellow. And you'll sort of see it kind of eventually starts looking cloud-like. I'm getting mine right up to the edge over here, edge of the foliage. There we go. And I'm going to put a little more pink, a little more purple. Just kind of break the clouds a little bit. There's not an exact science to this. Um, you just sort of see what you think looks nice. And as long as you test the waters with only a small amount of paint, it's real easy to just cover it if you don't like what you did. Okay, there we go. There. So my sky has a little bit of a variety in the cloud coverage in there. You can even go back and touch it up more if you want. But sometimes it's easy to touch it too much, so I'm sort of hitting that point myself, because also we don't want to muddy anything up. So I'm going to stop now with mine. If you accidentally went over onto your trees a little bit, you can just refine that edge a little bit if you want to. So for example, I'm going to just take a little more of this green. There we go. Let's make sure that's showing up the way I like. Okay. Oh, kadok. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go down into the ground and then we're gonna do the barn last. So this one you can do with either your smallest brush or this medium size brush. And you're going to take um, strips of color. So I just took a little bit of my Christmas green, just, and then I took a little bit of the Kelly green. Just jump around a little bit and make a couple of distinct horizontal lines. And make sure there's some different different sizes in there, but we want to coat this a little further. Okay. And when you're ready, do something similar with those lighter lime greens. Okay. And you can let them blend a little bit with some of the colors that you have. And you can, you'll sort of be able to tell what, if you're using the brush that is fitting right for you. If it feels like you're covering too much, definitely switch to something smaller. Okay. okay. And it sort of has a rough look, a little bit rustic, so don't worry about it looking like totally perfect. With my small brush, I'm gonna use some of my lighter greens and I'm just gonna make a couple of strokes just to give it that look, a little bit of grass. And you can add a little bit of another green to just sort of give it a little bit of a two-tone look. I'm using a little bit of Christmas green, just blended with what I had on the brush already. So I'm getting kind of a nice, unique color in there. So you're sort of focusing some of this vegetation on the areas where um, where you've sort of made a little bit of a, of a line. That could be a perfect base. There. 
And you don't need a ton of this either. You can sort of sprinkle it. And, and the ones towards the back are going to be a little bit shorter because you want to indicate that, the, that it's further away. Feel free to take a little bit of brown, just a little bit. And in a couple of spots, just add a little bit of a brown highlight. It'll break that green up nicely. And just do some quick, quick little strokes. Okay, there we go. That works for me. All right, last but not least, we're going to do the bar. So I've got my smallest brush here. I'm going to use my real red. And I'm first going to do the body of, of this structure here. We'll do the roof after. Okay, so I'm going to fill this in as much as I can with horizontal strokes on this side part here. Now I'm going to outline this front part of the barn. Okay, I'm overlapping onto that tree a little bit, which is fine. I can draw those branches back. I'm also finding it's easier to just do, just to cover the door with the red and then I'll go back and, um, and draw it in or paint it in rather. Okay. So I'm trying to do horizontal strokes again for this part as much as I can to sort of show the, the way the wood would be put together. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to take my gray and I'm going to do the roof. So first, I'll outline my roof. Just make sure it looks proportional to you. You want to make sure the roof and the building look right. So once you're happy with it, then, then you can move on to the next piece. Okay. All right. And with this one, you're going to want to do vertical strokes. And it's totally fine if you have a little bit of red in your roof. Okay, there we go. Okay, just going to extend my barn a little bit over here. Alrighty. Alright, 
So now would be a good time to put any finishing touches you might want to in, in the sky, for example. Feel free to try it out with different different brushes too. I'm going to try with my smaller my smaller brush and you can see which one works better for you. Cuz they do come out a little bit different. Ooh, I think this is just the ticket. This smaller one is adding a couple more types of clouds that I I'd, I'd like to add. bit of yellow as well and you'll see too layering this yellow on top um, works very nicely like after you have a little bit of white underneath With your small brush, grab onto a little bit of that black. You can put your door back. There we go. Also, with a little bit of that black on there, I, while the while this red is still wet, I'm just going through to define some of these boards really lightly. So as you can see, it's a very small amount. Could also use a little bit if you wanted, a little bit of your Tuscan red. There we go. Just to give your barn a little bit of character. And you can do something similar in the roof with a little bit of white. I like to start right on the bottom and just do some swoops right up to the top and just sort of let it blend a little bit with the gray you've already got there. So it's, it, it should be fairly subtle. Almost done. The last thing I'm going to do is just put a couple, let a couple of these branches sort of overlap. Using just the tip of this large brush here just to add in a little extra texture to a couple of those areas. All right. Okay. And that is it. So feel free to add any of your own personal touches. Um, you can certainly add like a, a window to the barn if you want. I'm just sort of darkening up that door a little bit. 
but there we go. That's about it. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I'll see you next month.